We're doing some preventative maintenance and we're hoping for a miracle. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. We are here in my daughter's Pontiac Pursuit. Now this is also a G5 or a Chevy Cobalt. We're experiencing no power steering. We also are experiencing hard shifting from first into second and then random shifting back into first and the speedometer is not working. Today I'm gonna to show you a number of things that you can check to see if you can restore that system working for free or close to free. First thing we're gonna do is start the car and see if we still have that problem with it. So let's go for a drive around the block and see what happens. Of course, oh no, there it goes. And it died. Now if I put it back into neutral, then I'm able to start it back up. And then we can drive again. The power steering seems to be working though. But as soon as it shifts into second gear, it's not happy. Now the speedometer is working. And I do have a check engine light, but I've had that check engine light for a long time. So it's it may or may not be related to this issue. Let's see if it dies when I pull up and stop again. Put it in neutral. It more or less fires back up. And it runs smooth in neutral. So it's not an engine thing. This is an electrical thing. Even when I put it in drive, it's fine. And when I'm driving and it's in first gear, it's fine. It's when it shifts into second that it just starts acting up. So it's good that it's still doing it because that means when I check stuff, if it fixes itself, then I'll know because the problem should go away. Before we get too far into this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below. If you've seen some of our content already and have not subscribed, we want you to join our community. Smash that like button, hit subscribe, and let's get back to the video. From under the hood, we wanna look over in this area here. Now what you're gonna see already is that somebody has done the ground wire fix on this. So that's where the BCM module, the body control module, loses its ground connection. And what a lot of people will do is add a ground wire from here to part of the body over here. This connection looks like it's kind of old and corroded, so it might not be that good anymore. I like to disconnect the module altogether, get this off completely, have a look at the connections and Make sure everything looks okay in there. This can get corrosion in it. So just by loosening it off and putting it back on, you can fix the problem. Now I'm gonna go in and out a few times just to try and loosen up everything that I can on here and just to reseat all of the connections like that. This is the main computer of the car. I'm gonna do the same thing to this because I mean, it's pretty darn exposed. And you can see all the junk that's on there. What are the chances some of that leaked onto some of this? So we'll just go like this and then lock that back down. And then do the same with this guy. You can hear how chunky that is. The ground for this module is right down there. I actually want to loosen that ground and clean it off just because that's the proper ground for the system anyways. We're gonna get a ratchet on there and see if we can loosen that off. To give ourselves more space down there, we're gonna pull this cover off. And on this car, it comes off really easily. You just pull the oil cap off and then this just lifts right up. Now yours might actually be attached. It's just got little pressure clips. So if you pull on it, it will just pop off. But all of our clips are broken and just the old caps holding it now. So that gives us a lot more access to get down in here onto that ground bolt. We've got that loose. We used a 16 millimeter socket on it. 
And all I'm gonna do is wiggle the connection like this, just to break off any junk that might be on there. Now, if you've got a wire brush, obviously, you can pull these all the way off and wire brush it. If you don't have a wire brush, we just wanna break that connection up and then reseat it so that it makes a connection again. We just wanna make sure we got a good ground. So now I'm gonna tighten it back down. Because somebody has put this wire on here, I do wanna do the same thing to this, just to make sure that it's got a good connection. So we're just gonna break off all the junk that's on there and tighten that back up like that. And then we'll go to the other end as well. This is a 12 millimeter strut mount. And we're just gonna loosen that off because that was not actually touching the bolt. They didn't scrape any paint off here. If they're touching that bolt, then we'll get a good ground. I've stripped back some of this wire just to expose more of it and get more of it because it had broken strands. And I've also scuffed up our ground post so that even if I'm not right on the post, I'll still get a ground. And then all I want to do is just like this, just wrap the wire around there and then stick this back on. Now, if you don't have a wire like this in your car, you probably won't and you will want to consider doing one because this is a good easy way to make sure that your ground over here is solid now my ground is definitely connected to here again so i know i've restored that ground and while i'm here i'm going to pop the battery cover off and what i want to do this 60 amp fuse here is for the power steering and i want to pull it out because that can cause feedback into the system and just make sure we're loosening it up in case it got corroded. You can even turn it around and stick it back in. When I see a fuse box that looks like this and is all dirty, I always wonder if any of my fuses are dirty. So this fortunately has the fuse puller and all I would do is just use this fuse puller to reconnect every fuse in this panel. So you can see I'm just hooking it on and rocking them around and then giving them one push down after it might solve a lot of problems that you're having with the vehicle we're doing some preventative maintenance and we're hoping for a miracle look at the junk that's on this one see how corroded this guy is that fuse is not making very good contact so by doing this it just breaks that all up and make sure that we are making good contact then we'll do the same for all of the relays Now that's all tight, we can stick this guy back on. Make sure it's in there good. Put that cover back on. And then we should put this engine cover back on. I forgot about everybody's favorite ground connection. So this is the driver's side of the car. And right by this headlight here, there is this 10 millimeter nut. And one of the body grounds are right here. And everybody loves to talk about this body ground. Now, obviously, this is very corroded. So we want to do the same thing we did with everything else. Now, if you have a wire brush, definitely you want to wire brush this. If you don't have a wire brush, then you just want to break the connection, pull it off, wiggle it around, clean it the best you can with whatever you've got and then put the ground back on. A lot of people have reportedly fixed their problem just by playing with this ground connection. We can close the hood up, make sure it's tight, give it a good tug just to make sure that it is latched down. I've seen too many people driving on the highway with their hood flapping around. Let's start the car up. Give it a second. Now it worked fine in first, it was after it shifted that we had a problem. And look at that. No problem. It shifts into second gear just fine. Speedo's working fine. Actually, the car seems to be running smoother than ever. <laughs> we've, we've fixed other problems too. It used to have this nasty misfire as well, which seems to have gone away. Let's go back into the alley and look, I can come to a stop. And then before it would get all lumpy idle 
even when it wasn't totally broken. There you have it. You guys saw how lumpy and crappy this thing drove before. You saw it. You saw what we did, and now the car is working beautifully. In fact, what I didn't tell you was that it always had a little bit of a weird idle at stoplights and whatever to the point that I was actually going to start doing some checks into the spark plugs, into the coil packs and all of that. I just haven't gotten around to it yet because right now we're just trying to keep this car running reliably enough. Now my daughter uses this mostly just for driving around town. She's never really driving out anywhere so it's no big deal. If it dies and stalls whatever she can start it again and drive again or she can usually get into a parking lot and I can come and have a look. But with this most recent issue it was totally a drivability concern and I was worried we were doing permanent damage to the car. So it is completely fixed all of those problems as well as fixed the rough idle this is like a whole new car what actually fixed it i don't know it would be nice to say it's always going to be this or it's always going to be that but in my experience it's never always something but it is usually one of the things that we covered in this video so i'll recap what we fixed and what we've done in this car so that you have a quick overview of everything that we did. We attached a spare piece of wire here. We wiggled the connections on the BCM as well as the PCM. We pulled them off, we had a look. We also cleaned up and fixed this ground wire by the headlight and we cleaned up and fixed the ground wire under there which is one that most people miss in their tutorials. We also wiggled every single fuse and relay in this fuse box to make sure that they are all reseated and that's all we did. So it was all free and it's taken us about 20 minutes to do all this work. So it's super easy to do all those things. You don't need any special tools. I did use a socket set, which I have a link in the description to the socket set that I use. So if you don't have a set, it's a really good set to use for just basic car maintenance and repairs. And other than that, I didn't use anything special. I just was playing with ground connections and making sure that all the fuses were seated. And that clearly was the problem with this car this time. Your car might be the same. I hope this helps you too. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video and we'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together you'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.